Six Ages is a strategy game that weaves resource management and RPG elements into an interactive narrative backdrop putting you in charge of a roughly feudal era type clan set in a high fantasy world. Six Ages is the spiritual sequel to King of Dragon Pass, a game I consider to not only be a hidden gem of a classic, but something of a legacy title for me and my channel. I have been playing that game on and off since around the year 2000, and made a video about it back in 2016, which you can find in the upper right corner here. As such, in this video I will do a fair bit of comparing and contrasting between the two, as well as talking about Six Ages as a standalone title, so you might want to check out my King of Dragon Pass video first. Six Ages has the overall vibe of a tabletop experience. It is turn-based, in a sense, but the idea is that you will be making series upon series of decisions which impact everything that has to do with the life of your clan. The main gameplay focal point, however, is that you will have to deal with various events that either happen by themselves or are triggered by actions you take. Things like raids, sending emissaries, exploring your newly settled region, building defenses and shrines, etc. All those and more are things you can and should do in the game as you lead your clan. The world of Six Ages is a harsh one much like medieval life must have been for our real world ancestors, but this one is also filled with magic, spirits, gods and all manner of strange and fantastic races of sentient creatures. The good part is that your clan is one of the many freshly moved into this new region, and the surroundings are as much a mystery to them as they are to you as the player. So in this sense you don't feel completely unprepared and unaware of what's going on, because your clan isn't totally sure of everything either. The first thing you have to do when jumping into either Six Ages or King of Dragon Pass is leave your modern day sensibilities and philosophies aside, because they do not make for great survival skills in these games. Thankfully this is where your clan advisors play an important role. They are generally the best in one particular domain and will counsel you on everything that happens from their perspective. The clan advisors will generally all have an opinion on any matter and it is useful and ideal to check with all of them before making a decision, because they will also argue for their counsel, oftentimes referring to in-game lore that you are not privy to, but also sometimes from a personal motive perspective. Whenever you have to make a decision, there is no easy answer. There are no good, bad or neutral decisions in this game, there is just decisions and dealing with their consequences. Oh, also, definitely start by playing the tutorial, I cannot stress this enough, the tutorial will go a long way to introduce you to the overall basics of how the game works. As for the rest, you'll have to find out through ye all the trial and error method. Expect to reroll a bunch of clans. Magic is an almost palpable resource in this game, much more so than mana is in others to be honest. At the start of each year, you have a certain amount of magic which you can invest into various areas of clan development, to work for you throughout the upcoming year. From a gameplay function point of view, magic works as a passive buff or modifier to certain stats, which themselves are then influenced by who knows how many factors. Well, we know at least one major factor, you. The decisions that you make can have both immediate and or long term consequences. You have to not only watch over the physical health of your people, but their spiritual one as well. And the presence of gods and spirits is something that has both direct and indirect consequences upon your clan. Maintaining a shrine to a particular god will allow you to benefit from one or more of their blessings, which work again as year-long passive buffs, but if you don't know the blessings to begin with, then you'll have to sacrifice to the same god in the hopes that they will illuminate some of them to your clan and you will have to deal with mischievous type spirits more than once in a variety of forms. But then there is the more material plane that you will be spending most of your time dealing with. Making sure you have enough food for your people, that they're not sick, that you have a decent number of warriors who can protect the clan in case of raid and maintaining diplomatic relations with the surrounding clans. Things like sending emissaries to forge alliances, create trade routes and generally trying to squash feuds and especially not starting any new ones. The game offers a very complex tapestry of managerial challenges. There are a lot more narrative events happening in Six Ages as opposed to King of Dragon Pass, and way more magic related things seem to happen as well, but at the same time it feels like the magic related events are less destructive than in King of Dragon Pass. 
or it could have just been my limited experience with the game, after all I haven't played Six Ages for 20 years. The art style is incredibly important when it comes to games like this, since that is everything that the player ever sees. There are no 3D models or sprites bumping into each other, nor are there buildings sprouting up when you build some. At the very best you will get a symbol somewhere telling you that you have built something and that's about it. The events are always presented via colorful illustrations of what is going on. Much like in the vein of fairy tale books which would offer an image of something you're reading once in a while, Six Ages does the same but it offers an image every time something happens. These help to paint a clearer picture in your mind's eye of the type of setting that you're dealing with. The music is still good, atmospheric and thematic, and maybe it depends on which one you start with or which one you listen to more. I personally think the soundtrack for King of Dragon Pass is more evocative and dynamic, but I am also biased towards it seeing as how I've been listening to it for two decades now. Six Ages, just like King of Dragon Pass before it, isn't something that you play for a couple of days or weeks at a time and then never get back to. It's not a game you finish once and you're done. It's an ever-changing experience that will offer something new each time you play and which allows you to play it differently each time you roll a new clan. This is the sort of game that you get once and then play it for the next 20 years, like I've done with King of Dragon Pass, and always have it feel, if not necessarily fresh, then definitely not old. Further chapters are planned to be added to the game, like expansions of sorts, so the Six Ages will get even more diverse as time goes on. In case you're interested in other interactive storytelling games, make sure to stop by my interactive storytelling playlist which you should see on screen right about now. You won't regret it. Suffice to say, Six Ages gets my nonsense seal of approval. You can find the PC version on GOG and Steam. I'll post the links in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think of Six Ages or if you have further questions about this or King of Dragon Pass. Thank you very much for watching, I've been Steven Nonsense, see you next time and have a great rest of the day.